Hello everyone, it's Richard with Home Tech Video. This video I'm going to be going over how to set up S-Tunnel with Blue Iris to give you a secure connection every time you access Blue Iris. Now what S-Tunnel is, it's a proxy designed to add a TLS encryption functionality to an existing server. Um, now there's three ways that I know of setting up Blue Iris for a remote connection um, if you're not at home. The three ways could be using port forwarding, which is going to be probably the most commonly used method of connecting to your server. The only thing with port forwarding is it is not as secure and leaves your server open to potential attacks. You can also set up a VPN. A VPNs are nice because it can give you access to your network just like you're connected to your home Wi-Fi. The only problem with this is that it requires additional setup on any other device that you want to have access into that into that VPN. So you need to set this up on every single phone, every single computer, and every single tablet, and make sure the VPN is running at all times um, to connect to the server or to connect to your Blue Iris. And the, the last thing is setting up S-Tunnel. Uh, S-Tunnel runs on your server and it is it does not require any additional setup on your phones or your tablets. Now, before setting up S-Tunnel, you need to set up a couple of things on your Blue Iris server first. Go ahead and open up Blue Iris, and then go into your options. Go to web server, and then you need to set up a couple of things in here. Uh, my HTTP web server port is on 81, and then my S-Tunnel is going to be configured and set up on port 8080. So to install S-Tunnel on your machine, what you want to do is go on to the machine that is running Blue Iris. I'm going to open up Chrome. And then I'm going to go to www.stunnel.org, click on Downloads, and then download the most recent version for your operating system. So I'm running Windows 64-bit. I'm going to download the installer. And then go ahead and run it. Go ahead and install it. I'm going to install it for anybody using this computer, which is just me anyways, but go ahead and hit next. Leave these uh, checked. And then go ahead and install. Now, during the installation process, it's going to come up with a command prompt window just like this. This command prompt window is asking you to create a uh, certificate for your installation. Now, really, you can put in anything here if you want. Um, you can put in just all periods, which is going to leave the fields a blank. Or if you plan on getting your certificate registered, you want to go ahead and put in your information for your company or your organization. So I'm gonna go and just put in some stuff here. So I'm based out of the US, out of Florida. My city is Palm Coast. Uh, organize, organization name, it's Home Tech Video. And then the rest of these, I'm just gonna put periods in. And there, it just created my certificate. Now, I don't want to start Estono yet because I have some additional configurations that I need to do before I actually launch it and start it as a service. So I'm going to leave this unchecked and then hit finish. From here, it's going to put a icon on your desktop for Estono all users. If it doesn't, uh, just go into your start menu and find Estono. Estono all us users. And then you're going to want to open up the GUI interface. So S-Tunnel GUI start. Once that loads up, what you want to do is go ahead and configure your uh, configuration file. So we're going to go into the configuration tab and then click on edit configuration. Now from here, this is a sample configuration file for S-Tunnel. So I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to go ahead and delete everything that does not begin with a semicolon. So everything in this configuration and in, in this particular configuration file is under the client mode services. Uh, which is Gmail, setting up a, a secure Gmail connection. I'm going to highlight all these and go ahead and delete it out. And then from here, under the example TLS server mode services, I'm going to add in a couple of lines. So this is what I'm going to put in. Open bracket, blue iris, close bracket, accept equals 8080, connect, equals 81, cert equals stunnel.pem, 
So to recap this setup process of S-Tunnel with your Blue Iris machine, your connect port is going to be set to whatever you have up here on the HTTP web server port in Blue Iris. And then your accept port, in this example 8080, is going to be what you're configuring S-Tunnel to be installed on as a HTTPS port. So 8080 needs to match as your accept. 81 needs to match as your web server port. So the next step that you need to do is to set up port forwarding on your router to port forward 8080 to your Blue Iris machine. Uh, 8080 in this example is going to be what we have S-Tunnel installed and configured on and set as your HTTPS port. Now if you're unfamiliar with how to set up port forwarding, I'll have a link in the description below. Um, that you can go and select your router and it'll walk you through the process of setting up port forwarding. So in the networking flow of things, this is what's going to happen. Um, from a smartphone or browser, you're going to be trying to connect um, to your Blue Iris server from outside of your local area network. You're going to be using a wide area network address or your public IP address with a specific port. In my example, I'm using port 8080. My router is going to forward port 8080 to the, my uh, machine on my network, on my local area network that is running Blue Iris. So it's going to take this incoming request with port 8080 and forward it to the computer. Now S-Tunnel is going to pick up that request because I have this set as the accept port. When I was typing in everything earlier, accept 8080 is going to be the port that S-Tunnel is going to accept it and um, receive it from the router. It is then going to encrypt that connection and forward it to the port that Blue Iris is running as the web server port. Um, this is going to be the connect equals 81 command within S Tunnel. All right, guys, as long as you followed me up into this point, hopefully everything is configured correctly. The next thing that we need to do is install S Tunnel as a service and then run it. To do so, what we want to do is go into the Start menu and then find the S-Tunnel all, all Users folder again. And then we need to install it as a service. So we're going to go down here to S-Tunnel Service Install. All right, so now it's installed as a service, so we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And then go down and go ahead and run it as a service. So go down here again, S-Tunnel. And then scroll down to service start. Now it's started. So now if I pull up the uh, S Tunnel All Users graphical interface, and then I'm going to go into my phone and show you that it's working. So I'm going to open up on my Blue Iris app on my phone, which I'm going to show you here in a minute how to set up and make sure it's running. I'm going to go and open up Blue Iris, and you're going to see that I'm getting. There we go. So now we got information that's scrolling through here, showing connection request and incoming and outgoing traffic through S-Tunnel. All right, so the next thing that you want to do in your Blue Iris app, this is on a Android phone, is to go and select your server, click on Edit, and then you need to change your LAN and your WAN settings from HTTP to HTTPS on both. Also make sure that you changed whatever you have your port here configured on S-Tunnel as your accept port. Uh, in my example, it's 8080, so make sure you update this as well. Go ahead and hit update, and then connect. So now from here on, you're gonna be connecting via a secure uh, encrypted connection using HTTPS. So in the last part of this video, I want to show you how to do some basic troubleshooting when trying to access your Blue Iris machine via Chrome or any type of internet browser. In your phone, um, if you're using the Blue Iris app and you're connecting via HTTPS, you'll never receive any of these type of messages. However, if you're trying to connect to your server um, via a Chrome browser or a laptop, you're going to get some messages and some errors potentially. So right now I'm connected on my local area network and my Blue Iris machine is running on port 
uh, our um, IP address 192.168.8.3. And if you remember right, the connection port is port 8080. So if I go ahead and hit enter, um, you will most likely be presented with this type of message. Or if you go and try to connect on your wide area network um, or your public IP address and port 8080, you're going to get the same message. And then down here, you're going to get the message saying error, SSL version interference. So the reason why you're getting this message is one of many reasons. The most common reason is that the SSL certificate is not signed. It's a self-generated certificate. And this in Chrome is not trusting the uh, connection and not trusting the certificate. Well, there's an easy way to get around this. Um, what you want to do is open up another tab and then go to Chrome. If you're using Chrome, this is my example on how to get around this in Chrome. So Chrome colon forward slash forward slash flags and then hit enter. And then in the search flags, you're going to type in TLS. And then on TLS 1.3, it's set to default. Change this to disabled. It's going to prompt you to go ahead and reload Chrome. So let's go ahead and relaunch now. And now, the next time I go to this IP address, so I'm going to go ahead and close out this and do it again, 192.168.8.3, colon 8080. I'm going to get a completely different message this time. So now it's saying that this connection is not private um, and not secure because this is a non-signed and non-secure certificate. I have not got a certificate authority to sign this and make it where Chrome knows that this is a secure connection. Well, if you've set this up on your own and on your server and you're not giving this out to anybody else, then it's fine. So what you want to do is go into advanced and then go ahead and proceed anyways. I'm going to enter in my credentials and then just hit sign on. And now I'm connected uh, via HTTPS. Um, however, like I said, this is not a signed certificate. This is a self-generated certificate. So you're always going to get that error message the first time you try to connect. And this is the workaround to make this work if you're trying to connect it via a web browser. So I hope this video helps you understand how to set up S-Tunnel on your Blue Iris system. If you guys like it and you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like this, uh, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment in the description on any type of future videos that you would like to see. So anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a great day.